Hi, this is Gary DeBach in Puyallup, Washington, USA, and I'm going to be giving a brief description and demonstration here of the new 3.5 inch baby FSL antenna. Uh, this antenna is uh, about the smallest inductively coupled FSL that's been designed recently, and to my knowledge, the smallest one that's currently in use by radio enthusiasts. Uh, this particular FSL uses 32 of the Russian surplus 140 by 8 millimeter ferrite rods. Uh, these rods are still currently available on eBay for anybody that wanted to build one of these. And if you shop around you can get uh, about 32 of these rods at around $60 shipped to the USA from the uh, Ukrainian ferrite sellers. Uh, this particular FSL is very small and compact, as you'll see when I put my hand around it. Uh, it's practically hand-sized to carry around. And uh, it uses the highest sensitivity large diameter uh, 1162-46 Litz wire. Uh, this particular Litz wire, although it's uh, very, very high sensitivity, because of the large diameter, it does require a 60 watt or larger soldering iron or gun to successfully prepare it for this project. And I um, just wanted to point out that if you wanted to make one of these with the highest sensitivity Litz wire, as I've done here, uh, you won't be able to melt the solder on the Litz wire with a 25 watt uh, standard uh, pencil type soldering iron. So anyway, um, I have this uh, FSL here. Uh, it does have 31 turns of the 1162-46 Litz wire. And to demonstrate its uh, inductive coupling effectiveness, I have here the uh, most sensitive stock ultralight radio. This is the new Eaton Traveler 3. Uh, fully reviewed in the 2015 ultralight radio shootout and uh, it's going to be receiving a 50 kilowatt station at 160 miles distant here around noontime in Puyallup, Washington. This is KXTG in uh, Portland, Oregon. So we'll see how the uh, radio itself does without the inductive coupling boost. Uh, not much at all. Let me try to max out the vol volume here. Well, you can see what we got without the uh, FSL boost. Well, let's see how much the baby FSL can help it uh, receive this station that is uh, pretty challenging for daytime DX. There's the peak right there. Okay, now we have an effective combination here. The baby FSL has boosted nothing, a uh, signal that was nothing, up to about... No, I'd say this is uh, around S7 now. Watch what happens when I tune away. Back down to nothing when I'm off frequency. And now we're back up to a very solid signal. Uh, be advised that with any FSL antenna, I'll, before I explain this, let me pull it away once more. And you can see we're back down to nothing. Uh, any FSL antenna, be advised that because of the high Q tank circuit, the inductive coupling tuning is razor sharp. 
And not only is the inductive coupling tuning razor sharp, the distance to the FSL is sharp. So if I'm off as much as, uh, or if I'm off as little as two inches in distance from the FSL, Um, I think I don't care for that content. I'm going to shut it off. <laughs> um, the inductive coupling distance is also razor sharp. So you've got two adjustments to play with. And this is why FSL uh, proper usage does require somewhat of a learning curve. Um, to be honest with you, when I first built mine, I didn't think it was working. But now I know they work very, very well. So thank you very much for watching this and have a great day.